So I'm going to talk more today about uh, technology, about the history of Tesla, you know, how we got started, and some of the technology trends that you know, let us get started, and then are also are still accelerating in the industry today. And a lot of these things, in my view, in our view, are going to have a profound impact on the, the overall energy industry. You know, there, this is an interesting period in time. There's new technologies coming that are you know, fundamentally changing and undermining a little bit the utility business model and, and causing more change in the transportation business model in general than people have seen in many, many decades. So maybe just as a recap, you know, what, what is Tesla's goal? A lot of people think of Tesla just as a car company, and they think, you know, our goal must be just to make and sell a lot of cars. But that, that isn't really why we got started. It isn't why we founded the company in the first place. You know, the world has a lot of cars. We didn't really think it needed more cars. You know, we, we started the company to accelerate the overall transition of the world to sustainable energy, both for transportation and on the grid. And it's a, it's a wide-ranging goal. It's a massive goal. But why we felt this was so important is largely because of the atmospheric CO2 problem. You know, this is a graph many people have probably seen many, many times. But it, it's, uh, it, it's what really speaks to the urgency, in my view. You know, why it is important to actually accelerate this change. Why we can't just you know, let it happen at its own pace or leave it to other governments, leave it to other companies. And it's why we felt a personal urgency to dive into this problem, to rally around it. You know, just recently, this graph is actually a tiny bit out of date, you know, just recently we've passed 400 parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere. You know, when it was a milestone that didn't get a lot of fanfare, you didn't read about it on the front page of many newspapers, but, you know, that's an interesting milestone. You know, we can measure it in the air outside this building, in the air inside this room. You know, this is something all around the world that has changed, and we're not going to see it go below that, most likely in any of our lifetimes. It's a, that's a pretty phenomenal and profound change. And part of why this is so relevant is because of its impact on temperature. And this is an interesting visualization that I like that a, a climate scientist named Ed Hawkins did. It's watching kind of the temperature data over the last little more than 100 years. And you can see it's spiraling out. You know, as you go closer and closer to the present, you can see the temperature getting you know, hotter and hotter. And it's really interesting seeing what's happened just in the last few decades. You know, this is sort of amazing, and if you look at it on a, a regular graph here, you can see it even more directly. You know, 2016, you probably have read, you know, the recent months this summer have been some of the hottest on record um, that we've ever had. We've broken records every single month. And it's a little startling and maybe a little bit alarming, I think, you know, just how far out of the norm that is. And I don't think there's much debate at this point that this is, you know, directly linked to CO2 concentrations that have increased, as, we, as I showed in that previous graph, and the reason for those CO2 increases is because of our burning of fossil fuel. You know, these things are all sort of chained together and linked in the energy industry, both electricity, transportation, heating. You know, this is at the heart of that. So the energy industry has created enormous prosperity and wealth and you know, convenience and comfort for all of humanity. This is something that's done a ton of good for the whole world. But we have this opportunity now in this sort of mission in front of us that we have to figure out how to do all the things that have made us so successful for the last century without emitting CO2. So as an engineer, you know, to me, that, that's this amazingly fun challenge. You know, we don't get too many times when we have an opportunity to reinvent an infrastructure that is so big. You know, it's a business opportunity, it's a you know, fun technical challenge, and you know, that's really what Tesla was founded to dive into. So back in about 2004 is when we got started. This wasn't that long ago in the grand scheme of things, but the landscape in the auto industry and the energy industry was quite different back then. You know, there were really no other electric vehicles. No one was talking about electric vehicles. Um, there had been an early wave of electric cars that were tried in kind of the late 90s and pretty much all had failed. And, you know, we were coming into this space at a time when this was kind of seen as a completely crazy idea. Starting a car company, you know, doing electric vehicles in Silicon Valley, it was, it was not something that was uh, the normal route. And, it's very hard to find investors, very hard to find supporters at all. But there was one key technical advantage that let us you know, get a toehold and let us actually make products that were compelling. And this was the change that had happened really in the last you know, 10 years, since the late 90s to the mid 2000s, where lithium ion battery technology and battery technology in general had improved so much and so rapidly. And 
if you look at where the last, you know, really earnest attempt to build a pure electric vehicle happened, this was with General Motors, the EV1. Some people might remember that car. It was a great car. You know, GM did a fabulous job engineering that vehicle to be extremely efficient and to make the very most that it could of the day's technology for batteries. But the best that could ever do was maybe a 100 miles of range, just a little bit more. And that was just not enough for consumers. It ended up being a market failure. And you know, the, the reason that the whole industry was kind of written off was because they just assumed that was the best that you could do. Technology wasn't ready yet, and people kind of forgot about it for 10 years. Well, when we came and looked at building the Tesla Roadster about 10 years later, battery technology had almost doubled. It had gone from in the range of you know, 300 watt hours per liter up to about 600 watt hours per liter. So that means you could store twice as much energy in a unit of volume, and you could basically get twice as much range out of your car. So what used to be 100 miles could suddenly leap to a little over 200 miles. And that made the fundamental difference. That, you know, was, that shift was enough to suddenly you know, relaunch the electric vehicle movement and to start a whole shift of the automotive industry.